Certain foods can absolutely influence the architecture of our sleep. This day and age, we look at things like REM versus non-REM sleep. We look at sleep efficiency. We look at sleep latency. And we have a lot more data to look at to understand which foods can positively influence our sleep patterns. So what I'm gonna focus on today is a lot more specific to what is called the tryptophan serotonin melatonin pathway. And the reason that I wanna focus on this is because most people want to pop a melatonin supplement, right? They wanna take that and I'm largely opposed to just taking in exogenous melatonin if there's ways that we can sort of influence the body's natural production or release of melatonin. So what I'm gonna focus on today are gonna to be foods within that category and I've got four of them. Now the foods that I'm gonna focus on mainly help the sleep architecture towards non-REM sleep. People think that REM sleep is the restorative sleep, but I'll get that clear really quick. REM sleep is much more about like defragmenting and sort of consolidating thoughts and memories without emotion tied to them. So it's like you're able to sleep and you're able to consolidate things that happened that day in the regions of your brain without emotion getting in the way of where they should go. Okay. Whereas non-REM is much more about the slow wave sleep, much more about the deep sleep, much more about the different restorative rejuvenating sleep. So we're focusing on that mainly. Hey, after this video, I do want you to check out this really cool brand called 8 Sleep. They are a channel sponsor and I appreciate the heck out of them, but it has changed how I sleep. So one of the things I'm not gonna talk about today as far as nutrition is concerned is the world of how cool you should be when you sleep, right? We should be a little bit cooler when we sleep. Some people like it warmer, some people like it cooler, but personally, I wake up a lot because I get hot. Now, the Eight Sleep Mattress Topper is really cool because it goes on top of your mattress and it can actually keep your mattress cool, or if you like it warm, it can keep it warm. And it's got a smart sensor, so it kind of uh, fluctuates the temperature throughout the night, but it also measures my heart rate variability, it measures my respiration rate, it measures my heart rate, it measures all kinds of things so I have data points when I get up the next day, and it gives me a recovery score, how well I slept, how much I tossed and turned. It really is cool if you're interested in sleep. So I highly recommend it. There is a link down below, and if if you use that link because they are a sponsor, you're going to save between $150 and $200. So that link is down below in the description. And a big thank you to 8sleep. Please check them out. I really will tell you it is a big, big difference maker in terms of sleep data and how you sleep. So you've heard of melatonin. People take it as a supplement, right? Well, melatonin is released by the pineal gland. And what happens is we have what is called tryptophan, which is a protein that we get from our diet, et cetera, et cetera. Tryptophan converts into serotonin serotonin converts into melatonin. Serotonin is the feel-good neurotransmitter. Have you ever noticed that when you're on vacation and you're feeling good and everything's happy, you sleep better? It's probably because more serotonin floating around, that means more is available to convert into melatonin, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So the foods that we're focusing on are working along that pathway. So let's jump right into number one, tart cherry extract. This sounds weird because tart cherry sounds like some hoity-toity over-marketed thing, but the research on it is pretty clear because it actually contains some melatonin and helps support your body that way. So the European Journal of Nutrition published a study that found that two servings of 30 milliliters of tart cherry concentrate improved sleep significantly. It improved circulating levels of melatonin, but it also improved total sleep time. So subjects ended up sleeping for 34 minutes more on average and their sleep efficiency improved up to 82%. That is pretty darn good. Sleep efficiency is how well you are following the natural sleep architecture and the sleep waves that you should be following. It's a very important marker to look at. The interesting thing is, is that tart cherry concentrate also might be working indirectly by modulating inflammation. You see, by acting upon inflammation, we can potentially have the brain be in a little bit, let's just call it a clearer state, right? Inflammation plays a big role. There was even a study that was published in Nature Reviews in Neuroscience that found that serotonin acted upon interleukin-1, which is an inflammatory cytokine, to actually allow more non-REM sleep. Okay, so we're playing a big, inflammation plays a very big role and we do have to pay attention to that. But anyhow, the other thing that we get a benefit out of with tart cherry is because there are a few carbohydrates in it, even if you're in ketosis or doing low carb, it can be very beneficial because it allows a small insulin spike that allows the tryptophan to get into the cell a little bit better. More on that in a minute. The next one is going to be B vitamins. Personally, I am a big fan of nutritional yeast. So nutritional yeast with dinner or other ways of getting B vitamins and also some magnesium, they play very powerful roles in again, that whole pathway for producing melatonin. So there's a study that was published in the journal Nutrients that found that vitamin B6 and B9 actually help to synthesize serotonin itself. 
So B6 and B9 can play a role in your sense of well-being, but it also plays a role directly in serotonin production, especially if you're deficient. And if you're doing low carb, it's very easy to become deficient in the vitamin B world. Then you have vitamin B3, which tends to spare tryptophan. So remember, tryptophan is the amino acid that is very important for serotonin, and serotonin is important for melatonin. So we have that category. Then we have vitamin B12, which directly affects the release of melatonin from the pineal gland in the first place. So all of these are in that bright yellow stuff, that stuff called nutritional yeast, or you can take a B vitamin. Then there's the world of magnesium that I wanna couple along with this. Magnesium, sure you can eat magnesium rich foods, but magnesium might be something that works a little bit better getting in a supplement form simply because it's hard to get good quality magnesium. Most people think that magnesium just makes you feel relaxed and that's why it's so good for sleep. You've got magnesium glycinate, which is bound to glycine, which has other sleep promoting properties. But what we see is in terms of people that are deficient in magnesium, where magnesium is coming into play is it's helping out with an enzyme that is required for melatonin production. So magnesium is critical for what is called N-acetyltransferase production. N-acetyltransferase is an enzyme that is, once again, required for the conversion of serotonin to melatonin. Without N-acetyltransferase, there is no melatonin. So if you have a rate limiting or a weak link there without the magnesium, you just cannot produce melatonin, or at least nearly as efficiently as you should. So a lot of times when people take magnesium, it helps them sleep. It's actually working indirectly upon their endogenous melatonin production versus just quote unquote relaxing them. It does that too, but it's probably the melatonin if you're deficient. The next one is gonna be consuming tryptophan rich proteins. Now here's what we have to know about proteins that are rich in tryptophan. Okay, they're not all created equal. Okay, the amount of tryptophan matters. As a matter of fact, if you have proteins that are low in tryptophan, it can actually hurt your sleep. And I'll explain how that works in a second. Tryptophan is what is called a large neutral amino acid, okay? So it competes with other large neutral amino acids to get into the brain. It's kind of weird how it works. So basically, if there are lots of amino acids and not a lot of tryptophans, all those other amino acids are going to get into the brain first, leaving tryptophan hanging out at the bus stop without a ride into the brain. What does that mean? That means no tryptophan to serotonin, no serotonin to melatonin, and you're not sleeping well. Okay, so it's very important to have a high tryptophan to large neutral amino acid ratio, meaning more tryptophan than other amino acids. So you should be consuming proteins that are rich in tryptophan. Now the protein that is the richest in tryptophan, I just have to say it whether you want to consume it or not, is good old fashioned milk. Because milk contains lactobumin, that is the richest form of tryptophan that you can find. It's probably why if you go and like have a warm bottle of milk, you're gonna cuddle up with your mom and fall asleep, right? It's probably why babies sleep. It's just the way it works. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But the point is, whether you wanna have milk or not, that is probably the highest tryptophan source. But the other ones that you can lean into are gonna be chicken, you're gonna look at fish, you're gonna look at turkey, any of those poultries, hard aged cheeses are also super high in tryptophan as well as leafy greens, okay? So it's easy to get the tryptophan in if you choose the right foods. What's funny is like red meat, for instance, is not that high in tryptophan. I usually say, hey, have your red meat with lunch versus with dinner. That way your dinner can have the tryptophan rich proteins that are gonna get you a better potential quality of sleep. If you have protein that is not high in tryptophan or is low in tryptophan, you're changing that ratio for the negative. Okay, you're gonna increase the abundance of the other large neutral amino acids without increasing tryptophan, thereby affecting your sleep negatively. Then we have good old fashioned omega-3s. Okay, so things like salmon, things like cod liver oil pills, things like uh, algal oil, things like uh, calamarine oil, good sources of docosahexaenoic acid, particularly DHA forms of omega-3. So there's a study that was published in the journal Nutrition that demonstrated that a deficiency in omega-3s actually lessened the ability of the pineal gland to release melatonin. So when we are deficient in omega-3s, which candidly is not all that hard for us to be, like it's not hard for us to be deficient in omega-3s because we don't get a whole lot, at least in the United States. We get a lot of omega-6s from seed oils and things like that, which say what you want about them. If we're getting those in, we're probably not getting omega-3s in. And since that directly affects how much melatonin we produce, that is directly affecting our sleep efficiency. There's also a study that's published in the journal Sleep Research that took a look at obese patients that had instances of sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, you're gonna wake up all the time, whether you realize it or not, because your breathing is essentially stopping. They found that the higher the amounts of omega-3 in those individuals, the overall better their sleep waves were when it came down to their slow wave sleep. 
their SWS. So they were getting these nice, big, beautiful brain waves that you need that indicate they're in restorative sleep, which is very difficult for people with sleep apnea because you're always getting kicked out. You're always sort of in that light phase of sleep or just in that barely kicking out of light wakefulness REM, light wakefulness REM. You're never getting into that non-REM sleep that you need. So just to recap and to give you kind of a summary of what you might be able to follow with this, okay, tart cherry concentrate as a straight up additive, something that you can add in, okay? Then we have B vitamins coming from things like nutritional yeast or whatever kind of B vitamin source you want. Then I would typically recommend some kind of either magnesium or dimagnesium malate, uh, magnesium glycinate, or some kind of supplemental form of magnesium there. Okay, then we have tryptophan rich proteins. So we have chicken, fish, we have greens, we have hard aged cheeses, we have avoiding things like red meat, avoiding some of the grains that are gonna be lower in tryptophan that are gonna decrease that ratio. Okay, and again, if you wanna sip on a Moo Moo sippy cup of milk, you can go for that too. And then we wanna be adding in things like omega-3s. So if you wanna couple it up with the fish that you're getting from your tryptophan rich meat meal, you can do that by having some salmon. Or you can simply add some supplements in. You can get the polyunsaturated omega-3s coming from a fish oil pill, from krill oil, from calamarine, from straight algal oil, whatever you wish. But focus on the docosahexanoic, the DHA acid, versus the EPA in this particular case. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.